All right, so we have Dr. Avi, we have Vegan Foot Soldier. They're just gonna talk, I'm not gonna participate. And the topic is organic, so it could get into health, it could get into environment, ethics, whatever they wanna talk about. Um, Foot Soldier doesn't have data prepared at this point. Um, this was short notice, so that's understandable. So we might uh, need to deal with some things in a future debate after having um, gone and like collected data, but we're gonna do the best we can here. Uh, with that, I'll give it to you guys. Whoever can start, can start. Oh. All right, guys, can you hear me? We can hear People can't, uh, we're the only two people who can talk in this room, but so I'm the only one who'll be able to say if I can hear you. Cool, man. Yeah, how's it going? Not too bad. So I guess I'll just start off with the uh, open challenge to all organic carnists, which is in general. So have you constructed a reasonably healthy organic diet that generates less ac economic demand for animal agriculture than a reasonably healthy conventional diet? And if you can't do that, then I don't see, there's been this meme, uh, seems to be an argument in a fortiori to try to defend organic carnism. So my open challenge again is to construct a reasonably healthy organic diet that generates less economic demand for animal agriculture than a reasonably healthy conventional diet. So my question to you is, it's been some time since we've discussed this. Have you, in the year which the debate has not happened, have you constructed these two diets? Well, um, yeah, I've not really looked into it that much in the last year. Um, I remember last summer we were talking on DM uh, about the whole organic is carnist thing. And um, and then I had that debate with Will, and then I hadn't really talked about it much more since then. So today, I think this has been billed as some sort of a big clash debate type thing. But um, I really just wanted to talk to you and get your perspective on where you were with this and if there's been any developments over the, the course of the year. Yeah, um, sure. I can, I can outline my position. Sure. Well, so I think... Um, Avoiding organic is a very reasonable heuristic for vegans. I think vegans should, in most cases, not all cases, but in most cases, avoid organic. The exceptions are in the cases of veganic organic farming. Veganic organic farming, if it is readily available and if it's cheaper than conventional, I think actually they should, in those specific off-edge contexts, they should actually avoid conventional. Um, but in... Unfortunately, based on it doesn't seem like that's anything other than something fringe. And the reliance of organic on manure can be reasonably inferred to be far more th from animal products than that of conventional farming. And that difference has only increased as the difference between manure applied to soils versus synthetic fertilizers. That gap has only been increasing even since I last looked at the data, the, since the new data has come out the difference between synthetic fertilizers and the difference between synthetic fertilizers and manure usage has even increased even more synthetic fertilizers are in conventional farming is used to a greater extent than it was before and they rely proportionally more on that and less on manure than even when i first looked at the data so i think the heuristic of avoiding organic is actually even we have even more reason now to avoid it than before um, and the fact that eventually I think that's just t something tangential, it's just, I mean, yeah, that it, it does, but it clearly relies proportionally more on synthetic fertilizer. And it really hasn't been shown to be the case that green manure, wood chips, mulching, things like these things, like veganic sources, things like veganic sources of fertilizer that don't come from animal products are really used to any significant degree that would outweigh this. So I think a reasonable heuristic is to avoid organic. That would be my position for ethical reasons. Okay. You, you said you've got some new data. Um, I'd be interested in see that, uh, to see that because um, the data that I saw before wasn't particularly compelling, I thought. But um, if you've got some new stuff, send it my way, man. I'd be really interested to have a look because the angle that I'm coming from with this is uh, I, I don't 100% uh, know the facts on everything, obviously. It's quite a complicated topic and I'm looking into it the best I, well, I looked into it the best I could last year and came to the, con the decision that it wasn't very compelling um, the claim that organic is carnist but if you can um, share some new data with me and there's some new insights that really points to that and really says look um, maybe this is actually 
a more compelling case, then I'm really happy to have a look at that. And okay. I'll, I'm happy to, I'm open to change my position. And the, 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 the main thing I had a problem with just um, leaving all the technicalities aside for a minute and all of the argumentation for aside a minute, um, just from a, a vegan advocacy point of view, I just find it so problematic on that level. Like even if it was the case that um, we can come back to the technical stuff, but just for, for now, like even if it was the case that it was s contributing slightly more to the Holocaust industry by purchasing organic produce, um, does uh, do, does like the the risk of the negative consequences of advocacy of go vegan but don't eat organic it, it, is that somehow outweighed? Um, I'm, I, I had a conversation with this about, with with a couple of people, and I don't know if you saw the the live debate with Will. We 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 talked about this briefly as well. And um, what's what's your What's your take on that? What's your vibe on the advocacy point of view of saying go vegan, but don't eat organic? I think it's a bit confusing. What do you think? Yeah, so basically my take would be, um, look, yeah, I would need to be presented with some sort of evidence that that would out that there would be some kind of negative effect or some effect that would disincentivize people from going vegan if we spoke about this thing. And if that outweighed the problems that organic ended up causing. So, for example, like we can make this case about a lot of things. Like if we said, you know, go vegan, still leather. If we don't buy leather, then look, if, you, if we don't buy leather, we might dissuade vegans from going vegan, you know. So we should like not tell vegans to stop buying leather. Uh, don't you think that might, you know result in a, in something that may outweigh the problem that leathers cause? Well, maybe, maybe not. I'd like to, but until someone can make that case, I, I need to really see it made the case that really it would result in something that would outweigh the problems that leather actually cause. Yeah. So I would apply the same thing for organic. Yeah. Um, I would say in uh, the context of leather, that's an interesting one. And in terms or, of the or vegan, or any, anything that generates economic demand for the animal agriculture, I would, I, I would, the, the, when someone makes the case that something is generating a, a, economic demand for, for a Holocaust, I mean, you, you really need to, the, the onus would be on someone trying to, conversion difference is going to outweigh economic demand for a Holocaust. Like, so I would need, the onus would be on someone to show me that. And it could be, it could be the case, but I would, I need to see the data for that. Yeah, sure. Um, just briefly, ask yourself, um, is RV robot in or is it my connection? Okay, well, maybe you didn't hear. All right, um, I, just had to, I just had to change my thing. He is roboting a bit. I can try dropping the bandwidth of the channel or the bit rate or whatever. We'll see if that helps. You want to try now, Avi? All right, can you can you guys hear me? Yeah, 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 it seems to be fine. Okay, yeah. So essentially, for anything, once something can be shown to increase economic demand for a Holocaust, the onus really would be on someone to actually show. I wouldn't accept it on speculation. I would say, okay, we as a heuristic, if we could avoid it, we should avoid it. And I wouldn't accept it on speculation that maybe there would be a conversion a conversion difference that would outweigh it. And look, I could speculate that maybe, you know, people might say more people may convert. They say, wow, the, uh, look at these vegans. They're so precise and they really actually care about their values and they're really precise and they're really looking into everything. Maybe it would convert more vegans. I can speculate the opposite way. And I don't know who's right. I would need to see some data to see who's right. Yeah, sure, man. I think um, data is lacking there because it's quite a niche thing, which I don't think anyone studied yet. But sure. generally, when you're dealing with the general public and doing outreach, um, in my experience, generally people are quite resistant to being um, told what they should do or to make lifestyle changes. And it's sort of like you've got like this huge hurdle of just getting them to stop paying for animals to be stabbed to death. And anything additional which might complicate that seems to be an excuse to just throw in the towel. And just from my personal experience, and as you say, we need more data on this, and I don't, um, I, I don't claim to have 
any data apart from anecdote from my own personal experiences, but I just like step for step is sometimes the way vegan advocacy has to be um, uh, carried out. You, you, can't, you can't just expect everyone. For example, that, that that's why the people were saying just stop eating meat one day a week, do meat free Mondays. Uh, I'm an abolitionist, so I, I don't I don't like this reducitarian style stuff. But people are so stubborn and unwilling to change that um, people are just resorting to say, oh, just one day a week, <laughs> don't eat meat. And uh, and any additional complication just seems to um, have people... You don't have to go on the get-go. You don't have to advocate. If we're talking about advocacy, you don't have to... Ad- you don't have to, like, when you're trying to convince someone to go vegan, you don't have to right away go say, okay, well, here, and by the way, avoid organic... You- those things can come in time as they learn more. I mean, look, it's a complicated topic. It's not something that I would expect. Look, mo- there's been a lot of confusion on this topic. There's been a lot of people spreading confusion on this topic, unfortunately. So I wouldn't mm-hmm. expect most people going vegan to understand off the bat that, okay, well, yes, this organic is a problem. I, now, I do think truth has value in and of itself. And I do think the morally correct position uh, does have value and people should know what the morally correct position is. And I don't think a speculation, which is what it is at this point, um, should outweigh and should just on speculative grounds should outweigh people talking about what is the morally correct position and to advocate for it. Um, but if, okay. if data can be presented, then I'd be open to it. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't stop the conversation on speculative grounds. Okay. Well, um, I would say there's an interesting case to be made that if we're just analyzing um, the amount of animal harm caused um, in the equation, um, and the financial contribution to that harm, uh, and not just of cows, but of all species. Um, mm-hmm. Would you agree there might be an argument to be made in favor of fruitarianism? Why would that be the case? Because it appears, just based on my research into agricultural production, that um, especially like tree fruit doesn't seem to harm as many animals as, um, for example, monocrop agriculture with um, root vegetables and, and I'd like I'd like to see the data on that. I mean, I do know that trees are mulch. Trees do, um, contrary to what a lot of people believe, trees do um, have fertilizers applied to them. Um, the other pro- issues with fruitarianism is that I actually don't believe it's a healthy diet. I don't believe it's a reasonably healthy diet, and there's data for that that I have. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm of a similar opinion. Yeah. So I, I, I wouldn't advocate for, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a standard. The issue is if we set a standard for a diet, that's not reasonably healthy. Um, guys, am I still roboting for you? Should I disconnect no, you're and reconnect? No, okay. you're so, so the standard again, so the, the challenge to organic harness, and I'll post it again. Um, the challenge to organic harness is to have a reasonably healthy organic diet that generates less economic demand than a reasonably healthy conventional diet. So I wouldn't consider fruitarianism to be in that category because I don't consider fruitarianism to be a reasonably healthy diet. And I wouldn't mm. want to put a standard for vegans to adopt a reasonably unhealthy diet because that, if we end up killing all vegans or if we end up causing severe problem, like health problems to vegans, then we basically shoot ourselves in the foot and we just prolong the animal agriculture industry. Because if we get rid of the vegans or we cause all these problems for vegans, then then what's the point? Yeah, sure. I, I, de- I do tend to agree that a fruitarian diet is not necessarily um, the best, most practical long-term um, solution for optimal health. Um, I think, um, I, I guess I'd like to ask you how you how you balance these two things. So on one hand, we've got ethics. On the other hand, we've got health. If I could prove to you with some hypothetical data that fruitarian diet was 80% as healthy as um, a more standard uh, whole foods vegan diet, but um, it was somehow more ethical because it, it killed less animals as a result of that diet. Um, what, what would your tipping point be? Uh, how, how unhealthy or how healthy uh, would we have to have the diet before you would say, yes, this is acceptable because it's ethically yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So real, real quick. Um, 
I don't know if I would be able to precise an exact tipping point, but what I would generally try to set up is I would set up the species of animals harmed, what they what their sentience correlate is. And by sentience correlate, I don't really have a preference if um, synapse count or neuron count is used. Um, so I would have a multiplication of the number of, of organisms multiplied by their sentience correlate. Um, and then I would consider that against the against the metric of health and however, we, we could define that as a difference in all-cause mortality or lifespan or however much we would do. I would multi And I would multiply that factor by, so by the average number of humans, the difference in uh, human lifespan multiplied by the sentience correlate of the human. And I we could you could do the utilitarian calculus that way. That would be one trivial way of, not trivial, but one basic way of doing it. Um, but I'm not convinced util um, that fruitarian, fruitari fruitarianism is actually 80% healthy. I think it's like a profoundly unhealthy diet. I think it's like very, very unhealthy. And uh, I, there's data that I have to show that. Uh, so okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not convinced this is even in, in the ballpark of something that is, that is reasonable that someone should ever consider. Yeah, sure, man. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware, I'm playing devil's advocate because I've been quite critical, at least on my channel of fruitarian diets, um, mainly because the, um, difficulty adhering to the diet long term but there are of course anecdotes left right and center of people who have been doing it for decades um i've uh, eaten fruitarian diet um so for months at a time but never long yeah. so so circling back now um you you like i know you don't have sources prepared um you you did ask me to sh show you my sources like i are you okay with that like i don't want to I, we can keep the debate we can keep this quote unquote debate if it seems like more of a conversation now but we can keep this conversation conceptual if you'd like uh and go data on a later time or if you're okay with it i can present data to you now if you would like and we can walk through it yeah man um we, we can do anything you like um from my point of view uh, i just wanted to talk to you man and i was happy to have a private conversation but it seemed that um, the yeah, the, the vibe was more sort of yeah. like debate, and and if it's a debate, I'm, I declare that I lose now because I don't care. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you and see where we were at really with the, the data. If there's any new developments, so if you've got any new data, um, sure, sure. send it over. Now. Um, yeah, so yeah, let me link something. Hold on, I'll I can link something. Uh, yeah, so the first thing we can look at is the trends of the differences in manure pride to crops over to pastures, to soils, sorry, to soils over time for crops. I'm posting this in general. I don't know if you can see it. And we can look at the reliance, and this is by country. This is across various different countries. This is across the globe as well. This is from the FAO. And we can see that over time, and I'm pretty sure this applies to just about every country, every region, um, you can see the difference in synthetic fertilizers versus manure applied to soils. Manure applied to soils increases to a very low degree, and synthetic fertilizers seems to have only been increasing over the years. Um, and this data goes from 1961 to, I believe, 2014. So is that the, the PDF you've linked? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, uh, do you have a page on it? Oh, this is it's page after page for a, each region for with the with similar data. There's the, there's a bunch of graphs on it, and it tabulate it it breaks it down temporally. It breaks it down by the country. Okay, just open a document. Yeah. I'm trying to uh, make heads or tails of it. Um, I'll save that and I'll I'll uh, have a look at it later. And, and the reason the reason I'm bringing this up because I I've I don't know if you remember this, but I've um, I took a look at your PD, your not your PDF, your um, your Google Doc. You had a Google Doc. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Well, from the world debate. Yeah. Um, I I'll link that. Um, and yeah, that was like a year ago, so I can't remember half the stuff that we were going through at the time. Okay. Gotcha. I, I researched it at the time. I remember, I researched it sort of like intensively for two weeks, like sort of eight hours a day. I was just sitting at my computer, like researching this topic legwork into it trying to get make heads or towels of it uh, a year ago but i just haven't looked at it since yeah okay so i mean the, the issue one of the issues i 
I was trying to look at what are the things that I can like the biggest issues I had with the Google Doc in terms of like the easiest things that would from you on. Um, and I think this point um, I would start with is that this claim that synthetic fertilizer has been on the, the decline since the 90s and manure utilization is increasing. Okay. I, yeah. Because I, yeah, I just so... don't know where that's coming from. Because everything I'm looking at from the FAO shows the exact inverse. So it shows that synthetic fertilizer is on the rise and manure usage is pretty steady. Okay. Um, I'm just looking through this new document that he sent. And um, I, I've, I'm, I'm looking at a couple of graphs here that are reflecting that. Because what, what it was... Um, it wasn't all over the world. It wasn't a global phenomenon. It was um, in certain developing countries, I think it was. And again, this was one year ago. I'm, just, I'm ho hopefully remembering it correctly. Countries, um, they were overusing um, fertilizer or something, and it like fucked up their soils or something. And they they started reverting back to using less and using different. Um, I'm sorry, are uh, you saying in the data I'm linking you, it seems to be reflecting that manure is on the rise and synthetic fertilizer has been on the decline since the 90s? Uh, well, I'm, I'm just flicking through the document. I, obviously, I haven't had time to read it. It's a large document, but I just sure. came up against a, a graph yeah. on page 23. Page, give me a control F or something, and I could, you could just tell me what page you're on if you see something. Yeah, Three, I, I just saw like synthetic fertilizer seems uh, it's been going down since 1990, approximately. But or, or it it went. Well, yeah, but but wait a minute. Since so has so has manure then. mid 90s or something. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I need to look through this document. But a bit. I just looked at. So the, so in Europe, in in Europe, so that wasn't since the 90s. That was actually that that actually started going down in. Um, around nine, a little bit before 1989, but then it started increasing again. And manure wasn't on the rise. Manure actually decreased also. So there wasn't the case. It wasn't true even in Europe from 1961 to 2014. It, it was not synthetic fertilizer has been on the decline since the 90s and manure has been on the rise because manure also went down when synthetic fertilizer went down as well. Manure also had a drop in. This is both manure applied to soils and manure left on pasture. Manure applied to soils being the more important metric to look at. But notably, since then, I'd like to point out, if you look at the tail end of the, the graph, even though synthetic fertilizer had that dip in 1989 on forward to like 19, say 1995, um, it's been on, it's been, it seems to be going up since then. It's it kind of tapered off. And then it's seen most recently, it seems to have a little bit of an uptick. And it seems like manure has the opposite effect. Manure usage seems to just be continuously on the decline as per the most mm. recent data. Okay. And that's even in Europe. Well, I'm going to um, read this document because uh, you uh, the first time I've seen it. So I'm going to read through that uh, in my own time and we mm -hmm. can follow up or something. Uh, have you got any sure. more um, yeah. data? Yeah, there's that there's some more stuff. Um, the other issue I had, let me see if I can go back to your Google Doc. So well, I'll just reopen your Google Doc again for one second. So the other, I mean, at one point we can go through all of this, but I'm just hitting the points where I think I would have the easiest time of, I don't think I can get concession on these things. I probably would have a hard time of getting concession. Because these are, I, I take these things to be like the easiest points to say, well, these are just like, on my view, what these are is I think they're false claims. Um, so the other thing is that, uh, with respect to pesticides, when we're talking about copper sulfate. So you wrote copper and rotenone. Copper is used in conventional more than organic and rotenone is banned anyway. So when you write copper is used in conventional more than organic, I take this to be a, a disingenuous claim, and I'll tell you why. So it is true that the absolute value of copper sulfate is a pest, as a, um, a fungicide or not a not used as a insecticide i'm aware of that but the amount that's sprayed the absolute amount sulfate is more only because conventional is just a larger industry 
it's a much more massive industry. And so because they're producing much more food and overall they have much more land, they're spraying more copper sulfate. But if you can use the metric of how much copper sulfate is sprayed per hectare or how much copper sulfate is sprayed per kilogram of food produced, you clearly get the case that organic sprays far more copper sulfate than conventional. Well, was that based on um, your own extrapolations or do you have no, actual yeah, data yeah, for that? Yeah, yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you, uh, here's the paper, hold on. Yeah, because I think a lot of that stuff, um, when I was working out the quantities of stuff used, uh, I think I was just going off of multiple sources and sketchy data. But I was looking at, for example, at, yeah. And, I've and, uploaded and a PDF of... in general for, for, for an example of, of this. For a, so basically, th this um, study in Germany, they actually controlled, they didn't just look at the absolute values, they controlled per hectare. Okay. And per hectare, organic ended up spraying, I believe it was around three times as much. Um, okay. And now I would note, I would I'll point out to you, um, per hectare calculations actually favor organic. This is a steel man for the organic position. And the reason why is because organic ends up using more land than conventional for the same amount of food produced. So when we're looking at copper sulfate sprayed per hectare, this is actually already biasing things in favor of organic. If we actually looked at a per calorie or per kilogram of food produced, you would actually get numbers that are even more in favor of conventional using less copper sulfate than organic. So it's already biasing things toward the organic side and we still get about three times as much copper sulfate sprayed from organic than are conventional okay cool man well um yeah thanks for uh digging out that data as well um and this is data that i didn't have access to when i was originally compiling um yeah my my case um so i'll have a look i'll i'll, I'll read that um and of course i'm not going to read it on the spot right now but um yeah, I'll read that and see what I, I make of it. I, I obviously trust that what you said is is true, and they use more copper in or, organic. The the problem that I had was, um, and this is one of the main points that uh, that organic, um, just saying organic doesn't mean anything. Um, organic refers to a certain certification, and there's many different certifications, right? So. You've got the Soil Association certification. You've got USDA Organic. You've got um, uh, Bioland. You've got uh, Demeter. You've got um, a whole whole bunch throughout the world of different certifications, and they've all got slightly different um, um, standards and and uh, hoop jumping that you have to do in order to meet their standards. And although they can be fairly similar, and they're generally sort of across no organic standard is going to say okay gmo and pesticides uh, pesticides galore but um so they're in nature but they do differ tree and even within the same country there's different certifications which have different standards and some of the standards that i was looking at are based um, fungicides so in which that respect in which countries have to go back and have a look. I think I was looking at the, I was looking at Demeter guidelines in various different countries. I ha I got the New Zealand Demeter, I think the New Zealand one, and I got the German one, and I got I think the American one or something, and um, I got some a bunch of other, uh, um, uh, like organic certification guidelines, and within within those documents, I saw. Some of the things that you were saying were a common practice in organic agriculture. They were either banned or restricted use. And the restricted use was, oh, well, if you use this, you're allowed to use it, but you need an exemption uh, certificate or something, and then you need to spray it, and then we need to take samples from your land to make sure that you haven't oversprayed. Then, then what we need, what we need at the end of the day is we need the the end, the result, the outcome. We need how much is sprayed per hectare or per, per kilogram of food produced, or both, really both. And we need to actually find out, even with all of those things, how much is used, if we want to even start considering that as part of the utilitarian calculus. Yeah. So. 
that that that's what we would need. Just just the just the mechanisms of well, it's harder to do in these certain specific countries. Well, uh, what we're really interested is in the outcome. The outcome. Um, so, and this is just a point about if we want to just go pure utilitarian, then we could consider that as part of the calculus. I'm not a pure utilitarian. My problem is the argument. These are these are the points that were were in your Google this in, in in terms of how easy it is to show that they are false claims. And I actually appreciate you um, being as intellectually honest as you are in this conversation. Um, well, I've to, been yeah. labeled as a no. sophist well, all well, over the uh, In this conversation, discord. actually been you've actually I mean look so far you've been you've been polite and you've been saying, okay, well, maybe I haven't seen the data. So yeah, sure. I, I do want to, yeah. Um, let's see, is there anything, I mean, we should definitely have a data hash on this in the, maybe on a weekend or something when we can crunch all these numbers, but okay. So yeah. the other, um, the other things is the only thing I wanted to hit on what the, you're right. They do have different certifications. Um, and they do have different requirements, but they're the most problematic restriction of organics seems to be pretty universal, and that is non-allowance of synthetic fertilizer. Um, the reason this is most problematic is when synthetic fertilizer us usage across virtually every single country is increasing, and manure usage is either decreasing or staying relatively the same and not increasing that much. What happens is just you're going to get this difference between animal products being used by organic and conventional that has a that has a differential that's just going to increase over time. And that's the biggest problem because I'm not aware of any organic certification that allows synthetic fertilizers. Well, um are no, you not synthetic? Um well not not a large amount of synthetic. I think I saw some things where it's like well, it depends on what you mean. For example, um I think you said at one point that uh, we were talking about nitrogen and, and nutrients and MPK and stuff like this uh, last year, if I remember correctly. And I was saying, but look, you can just uh, do crop rotation and to get the nitrogen. And you were like, yeah, but as well, you can't just have nitrogen you need, right. uh, potassium you need. Do you know um, those nutrients? Just curious. So we, we, there's three, yeah, there's three nutrients. Yeah, MPK. So, so potassium, um, yeah. uh, uh, phosphorus, and, yep. and uh, nitrogen. And, and phosphorus, nitrogen, yeah. Uh, and you're like, yeah, but you, you, you can't use mined phosphorus, for example, in, in organic agriculture. And that that's just wrong. <laughs> like, you, you can't. Like, I, I, was, uh, I just double-checked earlier today to make sure I wasn't chatting out my ass. And I was literally just looking at what about organic potassium. Can you? What do you? Can you get potassium? Well, you can get potassium from uh, wood char, and you can get potassium from. Um, well, you uh, can. Yeah, well, wood, 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 wood I'm ash. not aware of any evidence that wood char is used to any significant degree in organic. Um, but it, you can also get it from uh, Vanas, like this um, sugar industry byproduct. And, and yeah, these things are how, used. How scalable is that on an industrial level? Like, I mean, if we're going to compare this to like to the synthetic fertilizers that are used on such an industrial level, and we're going to compare this to manure, which is used on a huge industrial level, um, are you going to try to make the case that woodchar and finasse are going to be anywhere comparable to this to get potassium? Well, they're, they're, they're more specifically targeted. Um, more common would be green manure. And so, sure. from so, the research, so are we going to make the case for green manure that that's anywhere used to anywhere of the degree, anywhere com com that comes close to the degree in organic farming? Because look, if you could make this case, if this is a case you could make, that would be very interesting. If you could make the case that organic fertilizer is actually substantially comprised of green manure, and the organic industry, the organic plant industry, isn't mostly comprised of animal product, whether it be manure or blood meal or bone broth or feather meal or ground up chicks or any of those or eggshells or any of those things. If you can make the case that it's really the, the, the brunt of it is really, or even a substantial amount of it is green manure. I mean, I haven't even heard of this being, a, being used to any substantial industrial degree on this, any scalable level. 
But if you, you can make that okay. case, that's that's some, that is where the organic carnist needs to go to show it's not carnist. I mean, that I agree. Like that would be that would make your case if you could make the case that most or to a greater degree, if you could show, for example, um, to a greater degree that there's a differential between synthetic fertilizer and manure and conventional, there is the same differential between an animal product in organic, and that's not also outscaled by the same usage of such green manure in conventional. Because remember, conventional can also use green manure. There's nothing stopping conventional from using green manure at the same time. So if you want to make use green manure as a symmetry, show the green manure usage for organic and conventional. We can't forget that too. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So if you, can make, if you can make that case, and if you can, you can show that, oh, I, I will concede. Absolutely. Well, well let's discuss that. Um... Uh, I, I don't think that a slam dunk home run right now. Uh, I think what's more important is uh, for, first the blood mill and the ground up chicks and stuff. What I mean to say is animal products, whether it be manure, bone char, blood meal, any, oh, I'm lumping them together. Just like you're lumping everything together and calling it green manure, I'm lumping the other side together and calling it animal product fertilizer. Yeah, sure, man. But let's try and be a bit um, more specific now because- uh, Did you just, is... did he lower for me or just everyone else? Am I low? I changed the server location to try to make the lag go away. Yeah, he is quieter though. Can you talk, the soldier? Yeah, um, I'm not sure. It's very uh, low. Is, is it? Uh, I'll, I'll quit and reconnect. Hello, am I better? You're a little you maxed out on like 200% on the volume. Okay, sorry, there's nothing I can do. I'm just on my All phone. Right. If, I, if I go on my laptop. I can change it again. Change. I'm just. It's just cutting out a lot. I'm sure everyone agrees. Try one of the other US servers. All right, try now, foot soldier. I uh, like one. Yeah, it's still pretty low. All right, I, I mean, I can listen intently and try to make out what you're saying. I'll change it back. I just thought that might fix it. Yeah. All right, try now. No, I don't hear anything. Yeah, well, okay, so let's um, let's go into more detail um, about uh, yeah the, the specific nutrients nutrients quote unquote. So the blood mill and bone char and stuff like this and ground up chicks and some of the more edgy slaughterhouse byproducts. Some of those are banned in certain organic to use those in some places but i think we can strongly agree that manure is widely used yeah manure um, is 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 the everyone would agree that manure is the most widely used of the in general is the most widely used of the animal products it, it is manure you're correct okay well, your your robot's in pretty hard well, I, I don't know what's going on yeah and you're and you're just as low as you are before in terms of your voice oh fuck technical difficulties but um but yeah and so uh, of course is you. you're actually yeah. roboting for me too now yeah um i don't know what i can do man i'll, I'll try and quit and rejoin all right i'll quit and rejoin too and if that doesn't solve it i don't know can you, by the way, can you just tell me which um, which uh, organic certifications ban um, blood meal, bone char, um, feather meal, eggshells, ground up chicks? Like, which, which certifications end up banning those things? Okay, you sound like a Dalek right now, but I can understand you. So um, I can't hear what yeah, he. I, I can't hear what he's. Is he roboting for me or just anyone else? Yeah, I think it's the server, dude. Let's see. Let's try U.S. West. What do we have it on at the start? Central? Maybe try now? Hello, hello? 
Yeah, I'll just hit it with you guys right before. Are you uh, are you yeah. using the desktop app or are you using the browser? I'm using the, the Discord app. I'm on my phone with the app. Oh yeah. Can you maybe go over to the computer and go on go on the desktop app? That might be better, especially if it's plugged directly in with an Ethernet cable. Can you switch to computer? Uh, you have to hold it down while you're talking. Okay, so I just switched my laptop now. Can you that hear me? That is infinitely better. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, I think my phone is fucked. I dropped it a bunch. All right, uh, now that we've established it's not the server. Um, okay, okay, so... Okay, sorry, guys. Yeah, which, which, um, which certifications ban um, animal products that are other than manure? Um, so I don't have that in front of me now. Um, I read that some time ago, but I can go through some of the certifications and get back. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd like to see that. Um, and then was there any other thing? I remember. Yeah, go ahead. You wanted to get no, into I didn't say anything. Go ahead. Yeah, you said yeah. you wanted some details about something? Yeah, sure. I wanted to get into details about the specific nutrients. And so th those were some of them. I was just saying about how specific organic certifications uh, forbid certain um, sort of house byproducts and how factory farming obviously uses all of that shit. The cheaper, the better. And they're also using manure. And I wanted to talk to you about the nitrogen cycles because um, generally when you've got um, uh, livestock and animal agriculture you're going to need to grow crops for to, to feed them, feed crops and a lot of um, large farms, agricultural operations um, they have sort of like a cyclical like a nitrogen cycle so they're using their own for their own uh, manure uh, for their feed crops and then there's a nitrogen cycle and obviously, sometimes they might need to supplement the nitrogen and nutrients. But well, they they, um, they they don't sometimes they they well the easiest way to under to know that they definitely do is because there's nitrogen extracted from this nitrogen cycle every time people purchase the product, which is yeah. the meat. Every time they purchase the meat, they're out of that cycle. Yeah, exactly. Which which means they need an abundance of nitrogen. And so many farms, like this is, again, this is just anecdotal. It's not the best data, but because I was just trying to understand what the process actually looked like, I just went on a bunch of forums and just started asking farmers, like, well, like literally just like farmers forums and, and manure, like how do you um, get rid of the excess manure and stuff? Because obviously that's, um, you can't just dump it. And they're like, dump it. Why the fuck would I dump it? Like, we use it like that's gold. That's like um, that. That's that's like <laughs> stinky gold, or, or I can't remember the expression they use, but something to do with gold. And that they said, no, 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 we we use our manure because that's our fertility. We're not just going to like chuck it away or some shit. So mm -hmm. a lot of the livestock operations, um, they're actually using their own manure. So uh, and, and the reason why that point is interesting in this discussion is because to a certain extent um, if manure actually is valuable and people are actually using manure in the nitrogen cycle on their own holocaust farms mm -hmm. then it sort of breaks down the idea that this is just some waste product that needs to be 
gotten rid of like it's some radioactive shit that they need to dump somewhere and they they can't get rid of it and they need, uh, and anyone who buys it off of them or just takes it off of them even if they they pay uh, even if they um they pay them to take it away uh it's somehow economically uh, supporting the holocaust industry i'm i'm not sure if that claim really it doesn't it doesn't break the the idea that it would i mean look whether you where no matter where you set the scale it's going to tip in the same direction and in, in favor of the same heuristic either way. So for example, let's say manure, I mean, I, and I agree in some cases, I've actually watched a, I remember if we're talking about anecdotes, I've watched a documentary where one dairy farmer says, sometimes I feel like I'm not in the dairy business. I feel like I'm in the manure business. Okay. So he, so whether, so even if manure is, not a waste product and if we look at it you don't have to it doesn't whether you look at it as a waste product or a commodity is not the issue the point is all things considered equal if you have two cases and in, in one case you have a case where the manure can generate a certain amount of money for the process and in another case the manure generates less amount of money for the process so overall there's less demand for the process or there's, there's going to be less of that process at the end of the day if that scales up so it really doesn't. So, for example, if you had less, more people, more and more people just saying, well, you fertilize your crops with more manure, I'm not going to buy from you. Then people wouldn't look. Farmers may not look at their manure as gold as much as they did before and say, OK, well, why would I keep hold on to this manure? All these people are not going to want to buy my crops if I use it for I want to use the synthetic fertilizer. It's cheaper anyway. More people want to buy it. It's all relative to what people are willing to buy. And at the end of the day, the main point is. With manure, it's not whether it's a waste product or whether it's the way to look at it isn't if it's a if it's some weight as you said radioactive thing that needs to be disposed of or whether it's something that can be used of. The point is, if it is used, if it is used for those things, that gives incentive. It gives incentive for the process, which is the animal agriculture industry. And so long as it allows, so long as its usage derives benefit. And so long as its usage is used and is economically incentivized, then the process is economically incentivized. If you have a process P that generates products A, B, C, D, and E, and then you take product E and you take it from generating a net negative to a net positive, you've generated demand for process P. If you, gener if you take product E and you take product E and you change it from a positive to a lower positive, you've done the opposite. And if you take it from a positive and you go, you take it to a negative, you've done even more so the opposite. So regardless of whether you start off on the positive or negative end of that spectrum for product E, for process P, that produces products A, B, C, D, and E, it's just going to result in a differential in incentive for process P either way. So where you're starting from, where the manure is starting from isn't the relevant point is where these products are going, the demand for the products are going. So you have a process P, let's call that farming cows. It generates products A, B, C, D, and E. We can call them anything we want. We can call them meat, leather. We can call the a bone char. We can call it, and then the, after that, we can call it manure. Any of those products, the demand for any of these products, A, B, C, D, and E can shift up or down and generate a certain amount of money as a result. Those, that amount of money can shift up or down. If you, it doesn't matter where they start. All that matters is for the, it could be positive or negative. All that matters is the summation of those products and what they're generating for process P to result in.
it's many it's many different a- aspects. So, sure. um, it, we can, we for can example, if people for all of these aspects. Yeah, sure, and and I'm just not convinced that if you do this um, overarching but calculus just of clear, though, just to be clear, like I I wouldn't I wouldn't weight them equally. So, for example, if you're talking about pesticides that may harm other sentient beings, I would if we're doing a utilitarian calculus, I would multiply the number of beings that are harmed by a sentience correlate, whether that's neuron count or synapse count. So if they're harming cows, I would multiply it by the respective cow sentience correlate, whether that's neuron count or synapse count or cortical neuron count or cortical synapse count. And if you're talking about insects, I wouldn't just say, well, you know, you have X amount of insects harmed on one end by the pesticides and X amount of cows harmed by organic, but the one weighs out more than the other. I would, you would have to weight that by their relative sentience correlates. Yeah, sure. I'm not um, exactly sure if I 100 um, I think it just cut out again. Is he gone? Okay, disconnected for ages. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, so so what, basically what I was saying is that it's not a, it, it gets more complicated because you have to factor in the relative sentience of the different beings that are harmed in. Also, if you're also doing if a you're utilitarian doing... calculus. Yeah, sure, I got that much. Of, stop... There's no perfect way to do it, but you have to have some way of... Um, uh, let's grant that calculation. Um, but I went on to say before I got disconnected, that it's not only ants getting killed by the pesticides, it's also going to be birds and aquatic life and um, mammal aquatic life. And uh, so yeah. it, it's, you'd it's not to, just, And you'd have to it, it's not factor just like, that in for the organic um, organic agriculture industry that's harming them too. Yeah. And the other Data thing you'd have to look for... Well, just one moment. The other thing doing this is not just the LD50s, you also have to look for things like half lives. Now the issue, yeah, sure. with, yeah. Now, now the, the the issue with um, copper sulfate that organic seems to use more pretty ubiquitously, except maybe in areas where it's banned. I have to look into that. But so copper sulfate is different from a lot of pesticides um, or or fungicides or herbicides that conventional uses because because it's not an organic compound, and I mean organic in the sense of the organic chemistry, the carbon-based sense. I'm not talking yeah, about carbon. Organic. Yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't break down into carbon dioxide. It, it doesn't actually break down, really. It's, it's, a, it's just a polyatomic anion and, and an element, copper sulfate. It doesn't actually have a half-life. If you put copper sulfate yeah, it in stays, the solution, yeah. So what the hell is happening? It just, does it hang yeah. around until it binds to something? So I don't even know how to how to work yeah, out yeah. that calculus. I mean, that's that's like a really fucking problem. That's a that's a problem. It seems. Um, yeah, you sure. Have this pest, you have this thing you're spraying that seems to be harming sentient beings, and it doesn't have a half life. It just hangs around until it binds to something or washes away. At least the conventional <laughs> things that are being sprayed, at least they spontaneously break down into into things like carbon dioxide. Yeah. Yeah, sure. But I think, again, I might uh, um, be concerned. I know you've presented new data now, but I might be concerned on the specifics of the regulations of the certifications because many, I think Demeter um, banned copper. I can't remember the specifics. I need to go away and look at it. But but definitely um, there's it's, it's not just chucked about in the fields. Uh, it's very controlled as far as I'm aware. So um, you present a new data showing that there's potentially more used in organic. I need to have a look at that. But I think it might come down to a case of every specific certification is individual. And so if you, so, so you might, we, we, we might conclude from this that certain organic certifications are better than others. For example, you obviously um, agree that um, 
veganic based organic certifications are going to be much better and we should probably yeah. um, head towards and, and those like certifications. It hasn't, right, been but a lot of clarity. it hasn't been a lot of clarity on, there's been a lot of, I don't know if this is miscommunication or there's just confusion. Look, I, my position is not that there's a problem with veganic farming. My, my position is actually the, the inverse. Like if someone has easy access to organic farming and it's, especially if it's cheaper and more readily available than conventional farming, I would actually view it to be carnist to buy conventional in that context. Yeah. Like it, it would be, it would, I, I'll stand by that. It would be carnist to buy conventional. It's just that almost no one seems to be in that situation. But if they were in that situation, sure, the conventional would be carnist. And, and so would organic. It would just be veganic organic that would not be carnist. Um, if yeah, sure, man. The, yeah. The the, yeah. There are a growing amount of certifications which are veganic based. Like you've, you've got the biocyclic and you've got the stock free organic certification and you've got certified veganic. And you've, you've got a bunch which sure. are already sure. in and, place and, and, listen, and sure. there's, look, there's more. Still, look, I don't have a problem with those. And I, I would encourage if, if in, the, in principle, if people can actually have that and it's readily available, especially if it's cheaper. I would say you absolutely should buy from those. Um, I just, yeah. It just seems to be right now this isn't the norm, and I think it's. I think it's. You'd be hard pressed to make the case that this is like some. Maybe it's up and coming. I hope it is, but it, this doesn't seem to be the norm right now. It seems to be the fringe. Sure, but that is a subset of organic. And sure, that's um, fine. Sure, that's fine. Look, fine. this is. Yeah. Not, this isn't. So, uh, so what I'm my saying position is, is not all organic. My position yeah. is not. Everything that has the word organic in it is to be avoided. When yeah, I, yeah, sure. I, and and I, I think... Yeah, I think organic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, my point there wasn't to be some sort of slam dunk sleight of hand or something, um, but what I'm getting at here is we need to assess the individual certifications because organic doesn't thing. Organic means you're buying a certification, and if you buy a certification X, that will differ from certification Y in sure, potentially sure. important ways. So we might come to the conclusion together that after all of this, USDA organic is not good and it should be avoided. Yeah, some, I definitely don't agree with USDA some, organic. That's agree with you. That's right. Yeah, whereas maybe some other type of certification would be more favorable, uh, favorable to the point where we so should buy that we're over. We're, we're not going to disagree not. on this. So I, I agree. Like if there is a certification that says veganic organic, for example, I, yeah, then it comes down to the certification. If you have a certification that says veganic organic, I have no qualms with someone buying vegan. I think they should buy veganic organic. Um, okay, great. Also buy, and, there's, and the same thing for convention, by the way, same thing for conventional veganic. If there, there's conventional veganic that uses just only synthetic fertilizers, um, I would say, yeah, absolutely use that over other forms of conventional. Um, yeah, but, if, uh, if, but it seems it seems that this, as far as the organic certifications go, veganic organic is a fringe part of subset of the certifications. Now, I'll grant that it's still a subset, and if you can atomize it to that subset, I exclude that from my heuristic. I want a subset of certifications within organic. I exclude from the heuristic that I'm saying avoid organic. When I say avoid organic, I mean avoid the overwhelming majority of organic certifications. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I think this is an important. I think because I'm interested in specifics here because, sure, if you go and buy, and this is something I was talking to Will about, if you just go to your local um, box stores like Walmart or something or, or somewhere really large and you buy the US DA like standard bullshit and, and uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't buy that type of organic myself. And I know this conversation is about the, the, the commonly available organic and whether we should advocate for organic or not. But um, I think there's a big distinction in Europe. I'm not sure what the situation is exactly in, in America. But in Europe, it seems to be that when I go into Lidl or Aldi or some like shit um, discount store, I don't buy the organic food in there, or I don't generally buy any food in there, but the, the organic food in there seems to be often real or at least not much better than the conventional food there anyway, just in terms of um, just how you perceive the food. Whereas if I go to more of a high quality local organic shop, like the, it's just a whole different 
game in terms of the type of projects that I get there. And when I go to my local organic shop, like the farmers are up the road, like there's a farm walking uh, walking distance from my house, like locally grown stuff right here. And some of the websites, I actually looked at some of the websites and they were actually saying what they were using on the websites and stuff. They were like, it was in Spanish and I was trying to translate it and they were like, um, there's pictures on Facebook of the farms and they're like using mulches and they're using um, compost and they're using teas and they're using um, all sorts of bullshit. And yeah, they're probably using manure as well, but I think conventional uses um, its fair share of manure. So um, I, I think we need to look at specific examples. I, I think I'm tending to agree that um, with anything, I that the mainstream pumping out the units style organic in box stores or whatever you call them that's probably just the scam it, it that's there's probably not any higher quality agriculture than anything else but um but when i when i buy organic food i'm buying it at, at the proper organic shop and i really feel like there is a difference there and i, I really feel that if like, I, I can that, i could probably be- contact the farmers and actually find out what sort of shit it would if there really is a difference for this proper organic or whatever it is that that would need to be shown it would need to be shown like whether you want to say there's a health difference or you want to say that there's an environmental difference or you want to say that there's a difference in um, the usage of animal product or whatever difference you want we we would have to be shown and i agree we should get into the specifics um yeah all the point the point i want to make that so just to be clear in my position when i say vegans should avoid organic i mean that there's a heuristic that vegans should avoid the overwhelming majority of organic certifications and the reason for that is because there seems to be a symmetry breaker between fertilizer synthetic fertilizer usage and manure usage and that symmetry breaker seems to just be increasing as time goes on across every single continent across every single country seem not every well every single continent at least and that trend, um, and that, and there's no other countervailing data. There's no other countervailing reasons to say that any of the other things seem to be symmetry breakers. So green manure doesn't, I haven't seen data that green manure is becoming a symmetry breaker between conventional and organic to balance that out. And so because of this increasing usage of synthetic fertilizer and manure, that is being relied on by conventional with for, with respect to synthetic fertilizer and then um, organic had just ha- just puts the kibosh on it they put the ban on it um a, a reasonable inference can be made that organic on average and overall but not overall but like for the overwhelming majority of organic certifications you contributes more economic demand to anim- the animal agriculture industry and so i would uh, encourage avoiding the overwhelming majority of organic certifications and in the specific subset of organic certifications that don't fall into that, I would encourage not avoiding it. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, I, I think it does need to be more nuanced like this because, like like you say, um, I'm glad we're now that, – that was one of the things that was really annoying me about talking – when I was talking to other people, that they were saying, no, all organic's bad and organic is carnist. But – we really need to look at the specifics. And I think the specifics are when I go to my local shop and I'm paying double the amount there and I can see the local farms on Facebook and pictures of the farmers. And like sometimes, or I haven't seen my local farmers, but uh, some American local farmers, you can just watch YouTube videos of their farm and they're showing you their compost teas and they're showing you, uh, it's, sorry, they're, they're the fungal teas and they're, they're their green compost and their, their, their mulching and their, their compost bins that they, they make. All, all of these sort of like local farmers, when, yeah, when you I'd go like to, to local organic shop. Like their data, them. yeah. So I'd, li- yeah. I'd like to see, yeah. No, I, 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 it's nice that they're showing the green manure. It's nice they're showing the green mulching. It's nice that they're showing all the, the, all the things that they know every vegan wants to see. Um, but I would like at the end of the day to see the numbers on what they're actually using. How much manure are they actually using? What are the numbers? How much green manure are they actually using? What are the numbers? How does that compare to conventional? Um, cause it, it like any, any farm can show these things. Um, and they can show like, the, you look up, they can show the happy cows. They can show them frolicking in the fields. Like I want to know the data, what's actually going on. And I think, yeah, sure. I think, 
Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, and I do. But um, what I was getting at with that point is when I go to the local organic shop, which is more expensive, where my money is going, what I'm paying for, um, the whole point of why I'm spending double the, the price there is because I want a higher quality agriculture. I want them to do these things. I want them to do the these um, the permacultural techniques. I'm paying for the permaculture. They are doing those things, right? Yeah, well, um, I think it's, it's not only a shop by shop basis it's on a product by product basis and but if you buy one carrot cases, one week you should have evidence that they are actually doing those things right sure but but if you buy one carrot one week the next week it might be a different supplier of carrots so you, you would have to constantly be asking right so or, um, or you can do it you can do it on an aggregate you can do it on an aggregate if you're saying it's like okay well this cert certificate has this higher quality and they're doing all these Um, I can't hear you, man. I don't know if that's my connection or yours. It's not it's my connection, too. Um, uh, yeah. whatever, whatever metric you're using, whether it's the green manure or less, more green manure, or less animal product, or whether it's less, you know, less pesticides or whatever, what, whatever it is, um, the point is on aggregate, whether it's by certificate, you want to make sure they're actually doing those things. They actually have evidence to show that they're doing what they say they're doing. Yeah, they sure. don't have to be by farm by farm. It could be by certificate by certificate or on an aggregate. So, and, and what shows that is not the pictures of the green manure. It's not the pictures of the happy cows in the field. It's not any of those. It's, it's the data. That's what we need. Sure, but I don't think either of, us, either of us have that data. Data, which is unfortunate. I'd like to have the data, but I don't know where it is. Well, I think there are. I think there are. Then, in in the case where the atomized data is not available for the particulars, I think general heuristics can be made based on the data that's available on on the aggregate. Would you agree that there is some fundamental difference between box store USDA tomatoes pumped out by the ton and local? organic store, locally supplied, small farm, using permaculture? I, I don't know the... I, I suppose know. it is. In terms of what? Are you asking in terms of health? Are you asking in terms of... Um, oh, no, not in terms uh, of health. Uh, I, I will concede all health points. I don't really care that right now. I know at one point you were trying to make the case that organic caused more cancer, but I, I concede well, all I, health points. Actually, it's just the, actually, if you want to... Well, now that you mentioned that... Um, so so the, if you... There's two prospective cohorts on cancer and organic. Um, and the, the outcome, if you were to do a meta-analysis, yeah, I've actually remembered doing this and um, uh, I forgot the program, um, but uh, I, I generated the forest plot. And the effect size, so there's no, I'll tell you right now, there's no statistically significant difference in cancer when you combine the two cohorts that have been done. But the effect size favors conventional in the sense that there's actually an effect size that potential have a slightly less chance of getting cancer than uh, organic. Now, that's not a statistically significant difference, but the effect you, it should be pointed out that if the effect size was in one way or another, if there if that loose confidence interval intervals come out on the favor of conventional, not organic. Yeah, I, I did. I did look at both of those studies and active of the meta analysis because we'll propose the same thing. But I remember at the time I wishful thinking to come up with a result that said um, one way statistically can, um, significant so agree at all um, expectation I had of it being statistically significant the point, the point is that there's there's, there's another um, organic harness out there who that well it either is the case that organic is uh, or it's equal. It's not the case that it can't be the case that conventional is equal is healthier. Either it is the case that organic is healthier, or it's just as just as healthy. And it should. It's actually it should be the other way around. If the effect size favors conventional and it's not statistically significant, then we would conclude the opposite. That either it is the case that conventional is healthier, or there's no difference. In other words, if if additional data presented itself 
um, that all that all it did, all the it was just the same effect size, and it just lowered the confidence intervals because we can speculate on either side of the effect size. Then what we would end up finding is that there would be a statistically it's actually going to pan out or not. But when you have an effect size that favors A rather than B, and neither statistically significant, it's not statistically significant in either fate in either direction. If anything, you a or no difference rather than that would be a better conclusion than B or no difference. Certainly really, I would just conclude no difference that n there's no, we can't detect any difference, but it seems more reasonable to conclude B or no difference than a or no difference. Anyway, uh, tangent, but the, the, when you asked me, sorry, getting back to the question you asked me, um, the day, I need the data. I don't know if there's a difference between, um, oh, is he gone? Is he still here? I think he. Yeah, it's a really shitty time for the servers to be acting up. Well, I, I do want to say that I am surprised at him not being evasive. He's not, I just want to say, he's not being evasive in this. I don't see him to be being evasive in this conversation. And I do see him giving concessions. And it seems like he might be even changing his position a little bit. Um, what I want and what he said that he wants is to talk to you about name the trait and the law of identity after. So well, I'm curious if the, um, if the not being a massive sophist will hold on that topic. Okay, we can do that. I don't know if we can do that today. Um, I do need to sleep at some point. I can't stay up forever doing this. But we can have we can have that conversation. He says he can't connect. He can't. He can't connect. Yeah, I, I and I believe him. Um, it's not really. Yeah, I, I've gotten booted also. I was able to reconnect, but I've been getting booted. Okay, it shows that he's back. Yeah, okay, there's some weird shit that happened. His server disappeared, it was like I got blocked. Anyway, can you hear Yeah, I, I, I can hear you. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, completely fucked up my end, yeah. my connection dropped and yeah. so, server so disappeared. Um, Getting back to your, the question you were asking me originally um, with the tomatoes, like I, I don't know if there's a difference. I, I really just need to see the data, Foot Soldier. I, I need to see whether you're talking about a health outcome or, or environmental outcome or whether you're talking about a, a difference in manure usage or difference in green manure usage. I, I just need the data. I'm not going to say like just because something is a local farm versus something that's just box and lot of, uh, of uh, organic product with a stamp on it. I don't know. It could be that the box and lot is better. I have no idea. I just need the data. Yeah, sure. One thing I'd say is anyone who says that organic cannot be worse than conventional, that just seems quite naive because if I have organic rice grown in Arkansas and then non-organic rice grown in Thailand, we could just be arsenic is more hazardous to health because of the arsenic content. So that you could just say that it would always be the case. But what I'm saying with the organic stuff is, it just seems like that's what I'm paying for. I'm paying for the higher quality agriculture. And if I'm not getting that, then I'm getting ripped off. Because right. why am I paying more money? Right. 
And you would want to know that, right? You would want to know yeah. that if you're spending twice the amount of money, that there really is no clinical or statistical difference. Well, not not in terms of the, the health or environment, or environment, or, 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 or yeah, in terms or, of the in, in terms of the type of agriculture, in terms of like I don't expect them to just pump out with whatever in the barrel you, what and you, what like you say doing type the type of agriculture. Are you talking about environmental effects? Are you talking about uh, animal product usage? Are you talking about health effects? When you, when you say qual, when you you seem to be talking about this quality agriculture, like what? What what is it terminating in? What is what's the what's the metric that's being used here? Essentially, permacultural techniques. So you, you can see um, on a, a, an organic farm, which is just miles and miles of monocrop agriculture, and just plowing it down with a combine harvester, and versus a, a smaller, um, more managed farm with uh, permacultural techniques, where they're actually um, uh, like planting stuff and harvesting stuff a bit more manually, uh, labor intensive, they and they they're using yeah like on site uh, composting is is quite normal for these smaller farms, um, cover cropping with clover, uh, crop rotation why is using this uh, why, leguminous crop. Why is because oh well, there's lots of things we can get into. For example, with the when when you just um, when you just smash nitrogen onto the field in synthetic form, um, there can be a lot of runoff. And when you mm -hmm. plow it under with um, cover crops and, um, and and leguminous crops, then there's a better root structure. It's fixed in the soil a, a lot better. It, it's less runoff. The soil structure is better. The, the soil structure is aerated. Why um, does that entail a culture? Because, like, for example, there's there's different techniques like no-till. There's um, uh, symbiotic. Well, why does no-till until a permaculture? Like, like for, I, I understand that there are techniques. Look, I, I understand there are. There, look, you can rotate crops instead of just doing a monocrop. You can have no-till practices. You can have, you can have practices that mitigate soil erosion. You can have practices that mitigate runoff. I just don't understand why we need a permaculture. My issue with permaculture is the following: like when they, when the perma, and this is from permaculture advocates that I've seen. Last I checked with per the advocates of permaculture is that in order to really feed us, in order, if we were to actually scale this up to feed us, we would really need to take it in astronomical proportion. Like the lowest estimates I've seen is around 30% of our workforce and just put it into permaculture. And some say yeah. as high as 80% of the workforce work and put it into yeah, I've, I've and put seen everyone back into farming. Yeah, I've seen that as well. I don't want to become a farmer. Yeah, but I, I think mean, there's um, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm misusing the term permaculture here. I think what you're um, referring to here uh, is some sort of like hippie community in the hills uh, with their little garden. That's not what I'm really. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. To. I'm not. I, I'm not referring to that. I, I'm, I'm referring to permaculture in the sense that you have various different types of crops, whether it, at various different heights. You have trees. You have. Um, shrubs you have certain plant plants you can have legumes you can have potatoes and you have them staggered and you have them staggered in a way of such they're grown ne next to each other in close proximity to each other yeah rather than have them yeah that's what i'm talking about permaculture now the problem the problem with that is that it is incredibly labor intensive it's very hard we don't have technology to autom automate that type of system so it's easy when um, we have like we have like yeah, a row yeah. of hay uh, uh, of uh, sorry we have a row of wheat and we can just harvest that. Now there yeah. are ways. There are ways you can get around the problems that that causes. There are ways you can mitigate runoff. Ways you can mitigate soil erosion. There are things you can do. The biggest problem with permaculture is that it's so labor intensive that I, I'm not comfortable throwing thirty percent or to eighty percent of our workforce back into farming in order to do this. Yeah, me neither, man. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that would and yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced that this would be such a, a yeah, I'm not like, look, part of the greatest technological advancement uh, coincided with freeing up jobs from the agriculture industry, from far being a farmer. It, it used to be that yeah. 80 to 90 percent of the people like it used to be 90 percent, 80, 90 percent of jobs were farming jobs. Yeah, sure. And this is um, the 
exact line of reasoning that I have when I'm um, talk, talking to people who are like, uh, like truthers, like the, the truth movement people who uh, say that money is evil and, and money is a lie and all this sort of shit. Um, I just remind them of the fact that uh, capitalism and, and trade enables us to not be farmers. Um, so yeah, I'm completely on board with that. But the thing is, I think you're confusing um, the most labour intensive, supreme uh, permacultural dream type uh, techniques to just integrating some of that way of thinking. For example, I've seen various videos from universities experimenting with different techniques, and they were just uh, they 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 did a row of sunflowers and a row I think it was of wheat. I can't remember exactly. I'll have to get the video back up. And um, and yeah, they were like, yeah, it's completely feasible. Just go down the line with your tractor. Absolutely fine. But instead of doing an entire field monocropped, um, there were rows. And through there being rows meant that when you brought your tractor down there, the wasn't disrupted to such a large degree that it would be with the monocrop agriculture because the and, and field fine. mice could flee to the, the yeah. neighboring crops and and then you could uh, do more crop rotating stuff this is the I, type of stuff yeah, i'm talking about i'm not talking about yeah what i mentioned was crop rotation yeah the, these but that's not important to note that's not permaculture no one would look at that and say permaculture yeah yeah no, so that's, that's, that's one of the I, techniques i think i, 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 th I think I said about 15 minutes ago, I might have misused the word permaculture in this regard, but uh, I'm not exactly okay, sure about the, okay. the, the correct word to use here, but simply um, a type, although well, that's a permacultural technique, but it's not, it's Wait, essentially not say, permaculture. It's, it's, it's a technique. I don't know if it's a permaculture technique. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think that's all under the umbrella of permaculture, but as I say, I might be misusing the word perm permaculture, yeah. but what I mean here is just, um, integrating um, these age-old techniques, reintegrating them rather, into yeah. mainstream agriculture. I don't think and we're going to disagree. We're, 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 yeah, yeah, I don't think we're disagree going to disagree on any of that. So I, we we agree that there are techniques to mitigate things like fertilizer runoff. We agree that there are things to mitigate soil erosion, and they should be employed, and there should be balanced out with the labor intensiveness of those things, and to the extent that the utilitarian calculus allows. Okay, fine. I, I think we're going to agree I, on that. So, like, my, sure. I, my position you, at the end of... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you want to say do, something? Do you, do you agree, then, that organic has a higher percentage of farms using these techniques than conventional because it's literally obligatory uh, no, for certain data, data um, I've seen organic... It. The data I've seen is that is mixed, and some some the data shows that um, organic is is worse for in terms of soil erosion, and worse for and worse for runoff, worse for greenhouse gas emissions, uh, worse for eutrophication potential, and the some of the data has shown that uh, conventional is worse. So it, I've seen mixed data, and I can link this data. Um, so okay, yeah. Well, the more data we have. Have the more data we can um, go off. Um, I think sure. yeah, I'm fairly busy. I can't like deep dive into like huge um, documents. Like, like if I'm just going to have to read for a week, I can't really do that. I'm a bit too busy right now. But uh, I can definitely have a look at important sources. And um, yeah. but so just to answer uh, yeah, your, just to answer your question, the, no, I, I don't necessarily agree that organic is better in that respect. I, I think it not, may be worse. I don't... Okay, that's interesting because from the certification guidelines for um, certain certifications say you must do this. It's not, it's not like oh yeah, like if you want or something. No, well, like but, in but, order but, to get the certification, well, you must. I should say that if at the end of the day we find the outcomes, if the outcomes are showing that there are more negative outcomes, there's more there's more eutrophication potential, there's more. Uh, carbon dioxide, more nitric oxide, there's more greenhouse gas emissions or CO2 equivalent emissions from organic and um, there's more uh, soil erosion in organic. Uh, if, if, the, if at the end of the day we see those outcomes, it doesn't matter what the certifications say because something's at the end of the day, it's, it's not enough. The outcomes are, all these things are factored into the outcome. Yeah. Well, I... I've I've read a bit on the topic of uh, uh, the, the nitrous oxide being produced from 
the synthetic uh, nitrogen, and it sure. seems that cover crops plowed into the soil are much more environmentally friendly than um, synthetic nitrogen yeah. in spraying yeah. because yeah, obviously but nitrogen oxide, be the nitrogen oxide, nitrogen oxide is third. Yeah, nitrogen oxide. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's, is the third most can, worrying greenhouse gas. Can, so it could be the well. What you really want to do is you want to look at the total CO two equivalent if you're looking at radiative forcing. Yeah, you want to you want to look yeah, sure, at everything. You, you've got like, and, and, yeah, like me- methane is one of the most serious, uh, the most, and then CO two, and then nitrous oxide, and that yeah. is what synthetic yeah, fertilizer. The, the other thing conceptually you want to make sure is that there's some tar- type of factor in when, when you're looking at methane. Well, a lot of what a lot of the times the study doesn't actually do is they don't factor in the methane and any additional methane produced from well the same problem in the first place the economic demand for dairy farms from the manure. Yeah, and sure, that, but as vegans we want to mitigate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 the the issue and you see these ridiculous numbers in some of the publications. You see that the methane levels are just. For, for synthetic fertilizer, you see like, okay, there's a significant, some amount of methane level. And for manure, it's just like you have these nil values of methane levels. And it's like, well, that, that's ridiculous. Like, it, that, that can't be the case. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, that's uh, one of the things, what's one of the big problems with a lot of show that there's uh, an environmental, there's a greenhouse gas benefit for organic is they, they don't factor that into consideration. Um, so yeah, so I basically from everything I've seen from the meta analyses I've seen uh, for from the environment for for health for for health the prospective studies I've seen in health and the symmetry break I've seen from animal usage animal product usage I I just am at the point where I think the overwhelming majority of organic certification probably should be avoided as a heuristic for vegans I I think the overwhelming majority should be avoided and some in some cases. There's a subset which should actually be encouraged. That's where I'm at at this point. Um, and we can do a data dive at a later time if you'd like. Um, I did tell you I would link some articles, so let me find them. Yeah, maybe just um, if you can DM me just them in like, like a zip folder or one. So I've got them all in oh, one here. place. Right, right, I'll post it actually. I'll just I'll actually post it right now. Um, okay. It's uh, I'll post it in general. Here it is. Um, well, Avi, he's going to want to go look into it, so you should actually I'll send DM it to so him. Yeah. 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 Well, him. if you guys are wrapping up on this topic for now, um, Foot Soldier did mention earlier that he wants to talk to you about Name the Trait and the Law of Identity. I know you've got to sleep soon, so I don't know if you have time for that. Do you want to go back and forth with him on that for a few? I, I don't think I will, but I can do it for a little bit. Um... <sighs> okay. Yeah, um, okay. I'm... I'm pretty tired it's 4 a.m here um to, oh, to wrap geez. up the oh, conversation okay. or, yeah to, to wrap up the conversation we've just been having um and yeah, yeah if i sound sleepy it's why because it's 4 a.m and i got up early but um yeah so i would say really what it comes down to you you seem to have a lot of data which is not looking so good for the organic side i've seen data which um, supports organic but i think um, as a general balance of data, we just need to go over the data and see what it actually points to. And I'm just uh, going to trust you at this point that the, the data seems to suggest that organic doesn't uh, might not look as good in uh, many regards. Um, but what we need to do is somehow go away and come up with, as you, you were saying, like some sort of calculus for the actual utilitarian harm caused as a result of choosing organic versus conventional because we need to take into consideration um, a multitude of factors we need to take into consideration the animals that die because of the synthetic uh, the pesticides the we need to take into the nitrous oxide from the the runoff um, the the ocean dead zones on the runoff we need to take into consideration um, the vegan ad- advocacy that happens. of saying go vegan don't eat organic we, we would need we to would, take into yeah, we would take all those into account and we would take it into take account it. with both we would take the dead zones that are being caused by the organic industry as well uh, yeah we, we we just need to somehow calculate that yeah and then if yep. we were to yep. calculate with, that in with, a way which was with. compelling that we, we would actually not only um uh, contribute less to the animal holocaust industry by choosing conventional 
over organic most of the time um we'd also have to show that it actually worked in terms of vegan advocacy uh, to to a certain degree and and if that was all the case uh, i'm very skeptical of that but but if it did actually point to that then i would uh, make a video and say well this is the deal um it seems counterintuitive but here we are um yeah as i say i'm skeptical we'd we'd actually need to somehow calculate all that but uh, I guess we can, it, also, it's an ongoing to, process. Clear, like I, I, I just want to be clear one th about one thing. I, I'm not a pure utilitarian. So yes. I'm, I'm taking this approach, like assuming that you might be. Um, well, no, I, not I'm really. not. I, I'm actually, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no go ahead. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a pure utilitarian. I'm, I'm actually, I would subscribe to threat, something called threshold deontology. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure yeah, if I, I really understand the difference between uh, rule utilitarianism and threshold deontology. It seems like you, sure. like, in, in in the concept of rule, in the context of rule utilitarianism, you, you can break the rules under certain circumstances. Like anyway, I, I don't see how it's incompatible with. Uh, I saw you mention that on like a, a Destiny stream like yeah. a year ago or something, yeah, and I, I was scratching my he's head. Conceded, at he's conceded that they're not the same thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, uh, I can't even remember what he was saying, but I just myself, I don't really understand the huge difference. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I can, I can explain. So, so the in you rule utilitarianism, the concern uh, for the rule is utility. So, if you present a scenario in which the rule would not, in any case, generate or link up with utility, then it just collapses into act utilitarianism. Sure. In threshold deontology, that's not the case. In threshold deontology, if the deontic rule doesn't tie in or doesn't achieve utility, it doesn't matter. It still carries moral weight. Okay, um, I'd have to think about that at a time which isn't 4 a.m., four but um, I'll bear that in mind. The only reason I'm bringing this up, the reason I'm bringing this up is because um, for, on, a, on a threshold deontology view, um, it wouldn't actually even matter even if there was a net utility benefit for organic. Um, it would have to outscale. It would, it would have to be a benefit that really outscales the deontic harm by supporting organic. That's, that's, the, that's the distinction a, a rule utilitarian would make from a threshold deontologist. Where the yeah, yeah, sure. uh, yeah, I think I get that, yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, uh, I, I guess in terms of veganism... Um, I don't uh, really think that veganism makes a lot of sense as being a utilitarian position. Um, like, I, uh, I don't know, correct me if I'm being silly here, but the other day someone was like, oh yeah, uh, um, veganism isn't just um, deontological because you could be utilitarian. What about Peter Singer? And I don't really agree with some of the things that Peter Singer says. Like, for example, I'm not um, ascribing this to Peter Singer, but it, we can just imagine right now um, if someone came up to me and said, I'm about to eat two steaks, but if you eat one steak for me, I won't eat either. So um, so, so in terms of utility in that, that regard, you could eat the steak as a vegan and then that would be better somehow. And you, like, it doesn't make much sense to me. Um, as a vegan, well, you don't I don't even have to meat. go there. You, there's, there's, there's far worse reductios on, util, on utilitarianism, in my view. I yeah, sure. But, but even just with, with this, example it just seems absurd that i would eat a steak <laughs> as a vegan and be like yes it was a vegan thing to do to eat a steak and <laughs> no, it's, it's the, the, the antithesis of the vegan thing to do to me it, it just seems like a deontological position i don't really wrap my head around how <laughs> that, that, that works in uh, yeah. a meaningful way in utilitarian yeah so if if you would be a threshold deontologist it would be it would be even harder to make the case for supporting organic. It would, it, you would have to go not, you would have to make the case that the, the consequences, the utility not only is a benefit for organic, but it actually outscales the deontic harms that are being supported. Okay. All right, guys, I'm getting the impression that you're winding down on this topic. Are there any like last words? Um, yeah, I guess, I guess we've wound down successfully. <laughs> I'm falling asleep a bit, but, um, if we want to quickly talk about NTT, we can, um, otherwise I'll just...
All right, I'm just going to clip this recording and start a new